Sums, geometry, algorithms. When it comes to mathematics, many students groan. An often unloved discipline, France's former education minister, Jean-Michel Blanquer, removed it in 2019 from the common core teachings in French high schools. But with educators and economists ringing alarm bells about the importance of math across multiple sectors, mathematics is expected to soon return to the classroom for all high school students. Hello and welcome to France in Focus. There is no way around it, the numbers are not good. Multiple studies show that French students, well, they're not learning math as well as they used to. Compared to other European nations, France came in dead last in a recent study, the math levels of some 600,000 students. And on top of that, well, French students, they've decided not to take math classes. At the baccalaureate level, the last year in high school, well, some 40% of French students didn't take a single math class. France has a math problem to solve. According to a 2019 report on trends in school mathematics and science, French students are struggling. They have the worst grades in the EU. Tied with Romania, France is also lagging behind among OECD countries, with only Chile ranking lower out of 38 countries. According to the Tim's report, today's 13-year-olds have the same math skills as 12-year-olds did in 1995, and 37% of 10-year-old students know how to divide as opposed to 74% in 1987. And this isn't a new trend. According to a government-commissioned report, the average skill level of French pupils in mathematics has been falling for almost 40 years. The reform of the baccalaureate or high school diploma has exacerbated this, as math classes were removed from the core curriculum from 16 onwards. Only 59% of final year students still choose to study math, as opposed to 90% before 2019. And their abilities have also declined. In 95, 15% of pupils were deemed advanced. 20 years later, Later, only 1% reached that level. Understanding complex math is essential in the sciences, in technology, and for innovation. For engineers, it's a must. But as we're about to see, some students, when they enter university, well, they arrive with some serious handicaps. So, we are in what case? X square. The day's task, cracking complex maths equations. Just one year ago, these students were sitting the French baccalaureate exams. Now in their first year of engineering school, some of them are struggling. In high school, some students didn't even study basic concepts that are fundamental for any engineering course. Like, for example, complex numbers, which are essential in physics. This next generation of engineers blame the controversial 2020 baccalaureate reform for the gaps in their learning. Most of them only studied compulsory maths during their final year of high school, opting out of the now optional advanced programs. I had no real foundation, especially for differential equations and complex numbers, since I didn't learn them. It's true that the level here is too high for someone who hasn't done advanced math. Between school reforms and two years of the pandemic, these engineering students are playing catch-up. At the beginning of the academic year, they were forced to sit an exam to ascertain their level of understanding and to determine where they need to improve. This in a bit to better prepare them for the job market. Mathematics is an important tool like many others that help shape the mind. It provides the skills needed to be employable in the business world and in the world in general. The business world is in fact leading the call for more maths to be taught in high schools again. Shortly before the 2022 presidential election, 30 CEOs from France's top companies signed an opinion piece urging authorities to save maths. The campaign comes as the country grapples with an engineer shortage. Experts estimate France is missing up to 20,000 a year. All sectors are in need of engineers. The French economy is becoming more and more digitalized, so of course IT skills are in demand. France is also suffering from a brain drain with many engineers moving abroad, while others are leaving the industry altogether for jobs in the finance sector.
I'm not good at math. It is a phrase, even a stereotype, that many of us buy into. Studies show that especially young women say that math isn't for them. Among those that do choose careers in the sciences and in mathematics, well, only 20% of them are women. These pupils were taken on a school trip to learn more about technology and the world of industry, an opportunity to tell them those fields have nothing to do with gender. Some people may think these jobs are for boys, but the truth is that anyone can have the careers we've seen here. Only 30% of those who work in manufacturing activities are women. The gender-based distaste for the industry and science in general starts at an early age. Many girls think it just isn't for them. They don't believe in themselves. That's why there aren't many girls in science. They have to be more confident. And no one should tell them, don't do this job. Stereotypes seem to be at the heart of the problem. Even some teachers pass them on to their students, often involuntarily. Sometimes teachers call on boys to solve math problems because they think it will be easier for them than for the girls and that boys are more likely to give the right answer. But studies show that that's completely wrong. Experiments show many girls internalize those stereotypes. When asked to draw this geometric shape as a math exercise, girls underperform. When asked to do the same as an art project, they do better than the boys. During an evaluation, when something is at stake in a difficult maths test, for example, these negative gender stereotypes that say women are allegedly not as good in maths can become a handicap. These cliches throw them off and block some of their cognitive capacities so they're not able to use them to the fullest to resolve the task at hand. The gap between boys and girls has worsened with Emmanuel Macron's high school reform. Before the reform, 44% of female students chose advanced math. The following year, only 24%. Women working in science and manufacturing have started meeting with female students to deconstruct stereotypes and show them they can do anything they want. We're joined by Cécile ouvrier buffet uh, You are a professor of math education uh, here at UPEC, uh, Paris East Crete University. Your research focuses on how to improve how we teach and also how we learn math. And I'd like to start in the first place by asking you, are there specific approaches uh, that can help teachers make more math more interesting for students? Uh, rendre les maths uh, attractive. Making maths more attractive is something that's on a lot of minds. Everyone's afraid of mathematics, but we use it in everyday life. We need it. We use it in escape games, for example, or even to find our way on the metro. On a deeper level, you can also find maths in medical imagery and things like that. When it comes to teaching and training teachers, yes, we have research results that allow us to make proposals to improve this, and the objective, of course, is to boost the student's learning experience. Can you talk to me about other countries? Uh, what are they getting right that France isn't? That's a big question. If we knew the secret recipe, then we'd all follow it and everyone would end up at the top of international rankings. We can be inspired by the methods other countries use to do things, whether it's in the choice of problems we give to students when they're very young and how that changes throughout their education. We can also draw inspiration from protocols that have been used to train teachers. For instance, in Scotland, there's a mentorship system to accompany the teachers on a longer term than what we have here in France. In Japan, there are things like lesson studies that contribute to professional development. You don't become a teacher from one day to the next. You need to be trained continually. You are in a woman in a field dominated by men, mathematics. Why do you think it is that so many young women decide not to go into math? 
Au niveau des études, il paraît so, que les filles... when you look at the research, apparently girls need more time to choose their study options. They're also much more sensitive to failure. And there's also cultural baggage on top of all of that. We know many famous male mathematicians, but not that many female ones. Maybe the names of Emily Notar or Sophie Germain don't ring a bell for most. And that's really a shame. There are iconic figures like this that can encourage girls to think about their choices in what they want to do. And in wider society, we also need to create opportunities to have recognized scientific careers. So let's try to go beyond stereotypes of boys being better at maths, because technically it's not true. To what extent is France's low numbers in regard to math? a political problem. Is this is the source of this problem political? En France, le, on peut, on peut parler de la France en particulier. We can speak about France, but this is true about any country. Educational policy is always crucial. We saw other countries who care deeply about maths fall in the rankings. So it's really up to the politicians to take responsibility for educational reforms and policies. This isn't just about curricula. It's about fundamental research, research in education and teacher training. Thank you for speaking with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. That's all we have time for. Thank you for being with us. Stay tuned for more news on France 24. It's one of the most iconic features of the French capital. Not the Eiffel Tower or Notre Dame Cathedral, but the Paris Metro. Now call me a nerd, but the Paris Metro is one of my favorite features about the city, and there's so many fun facts to know about it. But how has the Metro evolved since it was first created some 120 years ago? And how is it dealing with current challenges like overcrowded trains or strikes? Join us for this episode of French Connections Plus, where we head underground and discover the Paris Metro. French Connections Plus, presented by Jeannie Godula and Florence Villeneuve.